Good morning. Welcome you to, to all of you. It's my great pleasure. My name is Jack Dangerman to the 19th annual Federal Users Conference. This little event started, I think it was uh, 19 years ago, at the National Geographic and had just a few dozen people. So now, look what we've got here. <laughs> Quite a group of people. The purpose of this meeting has always been about the same, which is to get all of our federal users together, have them meet each other, tell each other what they're doing, inspire each other with each other's work, and learn together. And that's exactly what we intend to do these next couple of days. In order to get you familiar with who you are, I always like to have everybody introduce themselves to one other person and tell them who you are and why you're here. Uh, you are an amazing group. You are amazing individuals, but as a group, just quite extraordinary. So could you do that for me now? Turn the lights on and, and turn around and meet somebody that you don't know. Stand up. <laughs> turn around. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Beautiful. Good start. <laughs> That's exactly, that is exactly what I want you to do during the next couple of days. Every time you have a break, introduce yourself, tell them, tell whoever you're meeting uh, who you are and what you're doing and what you represent and uh, your work. It's uh, my real experience that this kind of friendship, particularly in our little GIS community here, is the, is the backbone for what makes GIS so valuable. This year, like other years, I like to start off by showing a little bit about the work that you are doing for the government uh, in service. Uh, it's cutting across almost every sector of government. This 4,000 people that we have here in this room are working in almost every discipline, uh, certainly in every different department of the federal government, on the civilian side and certainly on the intel and national defense side as well. Some of you are doing work in the environmental monitoring and assessment of what's going on from climate change to developing conservation programs that will protect our environment in the future. And others are working in natural resources, forestry, agriculture, and land management. This work is so valuable, so important, looking at things like agricultural production synoptically for the entire nation or at the detail level, collecting building systems that collect crowdsourced information uh, down to the actual observation. These maps are, are, besides being beautiful, are important. They show the census of the United States, and our Census Bureau here is making census aggregate statistics available for the entire planet. We see organizations like USAID, being able to make their content now available through a portal and targeting aid systematically across Africa. In the educational space, these are just a mere few examples showing NECS's work, trying to get a handle on not only where students are, what the enrollment is, but providing performance measurement about how schools are doing, augmented with things like the census information to show access to quality schools. These examples show, the illustrate some of the big challenges that we're facing as a nation today. Issues such as officer-involved shootings or violent crime in cities, represented through maps, to the infrastructure protection programs that DHS is making. And then there's fraud and theft in the Postal Service. Postal Service is doing better, if you haven't noticed, for many reasons, uh, one of which I would hope to say is credited to their initiatives in automating routing and making their organization more efficient through GIS-based work. GIS is continuing to drill into buildings and campus management. These examples show optimum use of campuses they show showing energy consumption in buildings here at the, the Naval Station in Norfolk, and predictive maintenance management. This is making our organizations and our buildings more efficient. Uh, these beautiful maps 
show responding to and preparing for natural disasters, issues of fire and earthquakes, sea level rise, flooding. So as you're beginning to get a grasp of these maps, uh, you can see that they are so incredibly cross-cutting, cutting across almost every domain that we think about. And that includes defense and national security, getting a handle on where problems might emerge, and dealing with removing landmines from historic conflicts, developing an Arctic strategy for the nation. These are some more beautiful maps. I mean, they're just incredible, showing the visualization of LIDAR and remotely sensed information. This work by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the center shows change assessment using bathymetric LIDAR and topographic LIDAR showing change in, uh, as the currents change. In the national mapping area, our country is making real progress by taking database approaches to produce the topographic maps and the nautical charts and the good work of FAA, the aeronautical charts. And we can see other nations copying us and, and trying to keep um, also current, like in Indonesia and Malaysia and in Cyprus. Maps have changed, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. This new medium has come along called story maps. And this is, uh, one of my nephews say, this is trending. This is trending. Like hundreds of new story maps come alive every day, thanks to the good work of, of Alan Carroll uh, and his team. People are pouring data into this, making tens of millions of story maps a day being viewed. And these cut across, again, all the agencies, from the White House to Congress to uh, telling little stories about a, a park or a national tour to history. Uh, it's just like a new language, and you as professionals are helping people publish and tell their stories, which is quite quite extraordinary event, I think. GIS is being used to accelerate collaboration across agencies. Uh, this beautiful example with the Tiger Files, Community Tiger linking states and federal governments to build shared infrastructure, or this also beautiful work by the Census Bureau of putting their data up for real estate investors or uh, businesses to be able to pick the right place. But then there's lots and lots of other things, like being able to provide citizens like veter veterans uh, information about where their healthcare providers might be, and on and on. Portals these open portals for open data and open services are also trending. We're seeing it in almost every agency, not just at the federal level, but at the state and local level as well, providing more access for businesses, for NGOs, for citizens to be able to look at the good work that you are doing in the government. Now, this, I always get this privilege, actually, of going through thousands of maps and pulling out just a few <laughs> every year. And these are pretty exciting maps, as you can tell, I'm excited about it. I think of these uh, all the time. I mean, uh, you guys are doing hero's work. That's the best way I, best, uh, I would best describe it. Each of those maps, each of these sites, each of these pieces of effort, each of these studies represent, in some cases, small amounts of work, in some cases, huge amounts of work. And I just, uh, I don't know, I'm, I get emotional about it, but I, it's, a, it's a thrilling for me to see how exciting and cross-cutting all of that really work is. And uh, I, I wish I could acknowledge each of you, and I, wanna, I do want to thank you for sending these maps along and uh, give you special recognition. And then there are, I would just say, I like to use the word heroes. There are heroes in this audience. A few particularly I want to call attention to. First, Thomas Brophy. Thomas, can you stand up here? Uh, yeah, here he is right here. Thomas is, works for DITRA. That's the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. This guy works around the clock. Turn around. I want people to see your face. <laughs> this, this guy works day and night. He's amazing. 
His work is about weapons of mass destruction and keeping it out of the hands of terrorists. And literally, this guy does it for me. I mean, again and again and again. Thank you, Thomas. Num the second one is uh, Paul Fukuhara. Is he here, by the way? Oh, here he is, right. This is another hero for me, but a very different kind of hero. Paul gets the software, he prepares the software, he checks the software, makes sure it's okay, and then supports over 6,000 uh, people, real GIS users, on their desktop every day, answering calls, making sure it's ready. Right, Paul? Uh, it's a different kind of hero, behind-the-scenes hero, somebody that, uh, that I think many of you will relate with. Thanks very much to you, Paul. <clears throat> the third hero that I want to talk about today is Tracy Tutant. Is Tracy here? I'm hoping. Yes. This is another amazing person. I saw her work on Monday and Tuesday. Tracy actually runs something called the IC Portal. That's the intelligence community portal. And that's sort of standing up a web GIS for real. Uh, now, in fact, this portal is used by 20,000 people, almost 20,000 people every day, and Tracy is responsible for it. She's promoted it, created it. Just in the last few months, every day, 200 more people log on to that system to become members of it. And I mean, I, I was not prepared for what I saw when I saw your stuff, Tracy. So another hero, for sure. Finally, I'd like to uh, give out this year's Making a Difference Award. And this year, we've chosen John Brockhaus. Uh, John, could you come up here, please? Thanks. John is a prof Yeah, I know. John is a distinguished professor at West Point. For the last 30 years, he has taught there. For the last 22 years, run their geospatial program and uh, taught I think lots of you, obviously, from the awards, uh, applause, including a bunch of my own staff, John. Um, I don't know what you know about teaching. It's a kind of a magical art. And good teachers, you could probably think about good teachers. On your hand, you have, you know, maybe three or four that really influenced you. John has influenced thousands of kids, young second lieutenants that come out. And his product is a little different than many of yours' products. It isn't a map. It's a lieutenant who goes out and does magical things. So, John, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to acknowledge you and thank you for the good work that you do. And here's a little award. I guess somebody's going to take a photo. Here we are. <laughs> thank you, John. You want to say a couple words? Yeah. Now, the leader of any successful organization uh, should tell you that that success is more a function of the people who support and work with you than it is of anything that you do. And that's certainly the case with me. I have a group of wonderful young Army officers here in the front row who every day do amazing things. And most importantly, they inspire young cadets to go out and want to serve their country. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity that I've had for 22 years. And I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention that there's a young lady in the front row over there who for the past 37 years has supported, encouraged, and on more than one occasion gently pushed me down the path to success. Uh, and I wouldn't be here without, without her assistance as well. And one last thing for all those cadets in the audience who I may have taught, go Army, beat Navy. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you so much. It's great. Could you guys stand up, please, all of you who have been influenced by John and directly or indirectly in the audience, and particularly these guys, stand up. Turn the lights on. It's good. I like all this stuff about, uh, about John, but particularly I'll tell you what I, I really like, is that your students call you Dr. B. Isn't that great? Dr. B, it's a, oh, it really touches me.